okay so here we are discussing about joining data okay so joining data and means we are collecting data from two different tables and we are creating a third table okay so we are taking out the data which is common between two tables or maybe you are taking data on the multiple tables and uh, making a output table single output table so you can do all the you can perform all the operation in the one shot okay so let's start from joining so i told there are three types of join one is the inner join left join and the right join inner join it means which is common between your two tables okay so i already mentioned it here Inner join returns only the subset of rows from the first table that matches rows from the second table. It means it will just return the rows which is common between your first and the second table. Okay. So now let's come to syntax. Select your keyword. Then your column name one, column name two, column name n. form is your again keyword then you have to specify your first table and then you are passing a alternative name by using the as keyword and this is your alternative name why we are using alternative name because sometimes the column names are common between your two tables so you have to fetch a particular column from a particular table then you have to use allies name and what i mean like sometimes your table name is a too big okay so you cannot use it again and again for a reference so you can create a alternative name inner join is your keyword because you are performing inner join here table m2 as your keyword again for passing a allies name for table for table m2 then on here we use on rather than where okay and then i am putting a condition okay so here you can see i am putting conditions Okay, it can be we can perform the multiple conditions also. So here I already mentioned that allies one and the allies two are the alternative names. Or allies names give, given for abbreviating table names to make it easy to qualify column names. Okay. So here I am creating first two tables. First table is uh, data and training dot cs. Here training is my library name and cs my data set name. It contains two columns. First is employee ID, employee name. Both are character one. Second table is training dot mac, which where training is my library and the mac is my second data set or second table it contains three variables employee id employee name and salary employee id and the employee name are the character one and the salary is the numeric one so first i am just running both two tables okay so this is the first table and this is second table so here i have to perform inner join so inner join means which is common between your two tables. So here you can see because it's a very small data set that your employee 3 and employee 5 are common in your first and the second table. Okay, so here you, we are going to perform our inner join. Prog SQL is a keyword as usual. Select is your keyword because you have a select query 
so i am taking the first this one form telling dot ca this is our first table reference which i specify by the library name i am passing a alternative name which is a, as a and then inner join is my keyword because here i have to perform inner join this is my second day ta second table training dot mac so mac is my second table or second data set specifying by the library name training as b so b is my alternative name which i am passing using by as so here what i am doing it first i am taking the a dot employee id it means i am i am selecting employee id from first table training dot cs because the alternative name of the training dot cs is a similar for the second second variable also add an employee name it means i am taking employee name from first table training dot cs b dot salary it means b is my reference from the second table training dot mac so salary i am selecting from my second table so here that's when i use b dot salary then i am using some conditions okay so i told that we use the on rather than we use where again error employed it means a is again referring my first table reference and b dot employed it means b is going to refer my second table so first table employee id or second table employee id should be same to perform my inner join so when i am running it so you can see employee id and employee name are coming from the first table which is my training dot cs but salary are coming from the second table so i am running the entire code together So this is the first table. This is my second table, and this is my output of my inner join. Okay. I am giving just two minutes. Let's go through it. Okay, and if anyone has a question or doubt, just let me know. So anyone has any question or doubt
okay then we are good so now we are moving to the next topic is a left join so basically the left join it will take the all the rows which is common between your both tables plus rows from the your left hand side table or you can say the first table listed in your firm clause the syntax is completely same but instead of the inner join you use the left join keyword otherwise rest of the things are completely same okay so here again for example i am creating two tables first one is a training dot emp which con again contains two columns employee id and employee name both are character one second table contains training dot department which contains again two columns employee id and the department so here i have to perform inner join sorry left join so here why i am performing a left join here because like some of the employees which data does not exist in the department okay so when i will run this code so again you can see that uh, the entire code is same prog sql select then form then i am using the first table as a a then inner join i replace with the left join this is my second table name passing a reference as b a dot employee id because i am taking the first table uh, employee id a dot employee name taking employee name from the first table so that's why i pass the a a i already told you is alternate name of your first table and department i am taking the second table and the second table is your training dot department and then i am using on and then i am passing over my condition the first table employee id should be equal to second table employee id so when i am running this one so you can see so 1 2 3 4 5 these five are common between your first and the second table but employee 10 employee 20 employee 40 these are not common in your first and second table but these are the part of the second table sorry part of the first table so is containing your all the records of your first table so when i run this one together so your first table contains eight rows or eight observations your output will also contain eight observation because it will take all the data from the your left table so here taking all the here for the first uh, first table but things are that for department we have only for five employees employee 1 employee 2 employee 3 employee 4 and employee 5 so for employee 10 and 20 and the employee 40 we are getting a missing value because we don't have a data for these three employees in my second table so that's the output of my left join so anyone has any doubt or question so i am going to continue with the right join right join is also similar to your uh, left join but in this case it takes rows from your right hand table 
It means the second table listed in your firm close along with your matching rows. The syntax is again same from your inner join and the left join, but your keyword in this case it will be right join instead of left join and inner join. Okay, rest of the things are same. So again, moving to the next one. So here I'm creating the first table is a training dot order. Training is my library name and order is my table name contains two variables order ID and the customer ID. Both are character one. Second table is a training dot customer which contains again two variables customer ID and the customer name. Okay. I'm running both tables together. Fine, so here you can see the customer ID is common between your first and the second table. So in this case, you have to fetch order ID for all the customers. The so first what I'm doing it, added order ID because order ID I'm fetching with the first table. B dot customer name. Okay. And B dot customer ID. Okay, so in this case, I'm customer ID, I'm taking from my second table because my second table contains all the customers rather than my first table. And the customer name, I'm also taking from the second table. But for the right join, I'm taking only the order ID. Then I'm using firm. Then I'm using my first table. as a right join is my keyword then dot customer is my second table as b am passing as an alternative name and then i am putting a condition by using on like first table customer id is equal to second table customer id and quit as usual is our ending point So again, this is a single query. You can see there is no difference in there. Only your is keyword and again your selection of variables goes differ. So when you run this one, so basically you can see you are getting the all entire data for your ident table customer name and the customer ID but for one two and the three customers we have order ID rest of them is no order ID so it's coming as a blank okay so I'm running it together to you can just see it okay the so first table contains order ID and the customer ID. Second table contains customer ID and the customer name. So when you perform the right join, you got eight observations, which is containing your all the customer ID and the customer name from your right hand side table. But order ID you are getting only for the three customers because your three customers are the common between your first table and second table. But it's coming a blank for your all the other customers. Okay. So I'm going two minutes, just go through it and just let me know if anyone has any problem or any doubt.
So anyone has any doubt or any question? Okay, fine. Then we are good. So we are moving to the next topic. Then how to summarize your data? The summarization of the data we can do in data step by using sorry in a procedure we can use proc means or proc summary to summarize your data the same thing we are going to do it here okay there we were using a by statement here we are using the group by statement so remember when you are using summarize or you are using the aggregate functions for summarizing your data then you have to use group by statement it is pretty much similar to is completely similar to your proc means and the proc summary so here you can see i am creating a table sales which is contain store id customer id month and the sales i am just creating this data this is my data set so first what i do it you have to use select prog sql again is your keyword as usual select is a keyword then you have to specify the variable on which basis you are grouping your data and that variable you have to mention in your group by statement also again this is the single query okay so because you are grouping so you remember one thing is that here no need to sort your data just like what we are doing in your prog means okay count basically count it will do a n in the prog means here we are use a count and the star it means it will consider all the rows as total count it means we are creating a new variable which name is the total count okay from again is our keyword then our table name which is specify with the our library name then we are using the group by statement is similar to by statement in the proc means in the proc summary and then you have to specify the variable on which basis you are grouping your data so when you run this one you will get this one so basically here you have two customers c1 and c2 and total count is 10 and 11 okay so again i am doing the same thing now i am looking at sales at the store level so what i am doing it i am using a store id and the same store id i am using in the group by store group by statement also then sum which variable sum i have do it i use in the sales then as it means i am creating a new variable which is name is the total sales from is my keyword and this is my table name and group by statement so when i am running this one i am getting total sales at a store level s1 and s2 so s1 sales is 2369 s2 sales is 2120 okay but same thing if you have to do it on the store and the customer level then you have to specify two variables store id and the customer id in the both you have to specify in your group by statement it should be separated by comma so when you run this one then you will get the combination of your store plus customer id for s1 c1 sales is 1060 and c2 sales is 1399 sorry 1309 for s2 c1 sales is 970 and c2 sales is 1150 So in this way, in this case, I use both store ID and the customer ID in my
group by statement the same thing you can do in the store id in the month level here previously i was doing in the store id in the customer id level now the same thing i am doing in the store id in the customer uh, customer uh, store id in the month level remember entire query is a single statement for your view purpose i am making the three lines so you can understand that what the first line or the second line or the third line otherwise this is a single statement ending with a semi semicolon so here i am doing in the store id in the month and same thing i am specify in my group by statement also so here for s1 the first month sales is 1000 for second month sales is 1369 for s2 first month sales is 1300 for second month sales is 820 So in this case, I am taking sales at total sale at store and month level. The same thing we can uh, do it for the we can take the average also. So Diana, we are good. Or I am giving two minutes. Just go for it. If anyone has any question, or just let me know. So next topic is uh, having when. Uh, we have to apply conditions on the aggregate functions
so then moving to the next topic so basically here we are using some aggregate functions to just summarize your data but what happens like if you have to apply conditions on your aggregate data or your summarized data so here you can see I am using average sales at store ID in the month level and I need only those store ID in the month whose average sales is greater than 200 okay so basically I will the calculation will be the same first Brock SQL as usual our uh, keyword select then store ID in a month because here I am doing analysis or grouping in the store ID in the group which I already mentioned in my group by statement also and here I am using average sale and here I was using some total sales here I am taking average because I am calculating the mean of my sales at store ID in a month level so average sales is the average sales it's just your naming so new name is the as average sales from your training sales and then your group by statement you are specifying your store ID in the month and then you are applying conditions on the aggregate function so for when you are applying conditions on aggregate function then we use the having keyword okay having keyword and then you specify average sales is greater than 200 so this is my condition here so do one thing first run it with, without this query Okay, one minute otherwise we can we can write this query again. The so first query I'm running with the without having condition, the second time I'm running with the condition. So you can see I'm running the both together. one minute oh that I mentioned first so here again the first table you can see I have applied the condition greater than 200 so only greater than 200 so s1 in the second month and S2 first month is going to satisfy this condition so you are getting only these two records okay because S1 is 200 but is the is not greater than is equal so that's the is not taken the first one and the fourth one is 164 which is less than 200 so only these two are going to satisfy my condition so that season I'm getting those two records so in this way by using having we can apply conditions on aggregate functions okay like sum total or count or standard deviation anything which you do using by prog means or prog summary you can perform it here so basically there is one interview question is there basically what is the difference between your where and uh, having so basically is very important interview question so where we use when we apply conditions on our variables okay but having you are applying conditions on variables along with your aggregate functions and your aggregate function is just like sum average or count so when you are applying condition on the aggregate function just like you are taking it here average of sales then we use the having keyword okay so anyone has any doubt or any question So now moving to the next topic that uh, sometimes here we are working on the existing function. What about if I have to create a new variable here? So first again prog SQL as usual. 
select is my keyword star it means i already discussed that we are taking all the variables from our data set and this is my new variable which is the what is it, it means it's taking that 10% so it is just multiplying with the 0.1 with my sales as profit so as profit is what is my new variable and from is my keyword and trading dot sales is my data set name along or table name along with my library name so when i running this one you can see it is generating one more table which is called more variable which is called the profit which is a 10% of my sales here you can see it so my actual table contains only one store id customer id month and sales and here i am creating one more table one more variable which is the profit okay so why i am using what am i like if you have to apply condition on the newly created variables so when so in this case you can see i i have to take only those data where profit is greater than 20 so basically profit is my new variable which i calculated from my existing variables so what i am doing it I am using a keyword which is called as the calculated before applying conditions. So it means I am telling that calculated profit. So calculated is my keyword here. So I am telling that profit has been created from my existing variable which is sales. So I am using calculated. It means it's a new variable. Okay, so when the calculator we are using when we have to apply conditions on newly created variables, not of our existing variables. So I'm running both together so you can see the difference. So first table contains all the records. Second table you can see is just filtering my data. All the profit is coming greater than 20. So basically now I am coming to the next topic if I have to apply if conditions okay in, in this case the profit is just equivalent to my 10% of my sales but what happen if like for S1 it sales is my 10% of uh, sorry in a, a store ID S1 my profit is my 10% of my sales at S2 is 20% of my sales and the other store is the 30% of my sales then we use if then else in my data step but what happen if you have to apply in progress here then we use case when else statement okay so again progress SQL is your keyword as usual select Again keyword star it means I am selecting all the variables. Here I am creating a new variable by using case. Case it means on which variable you have to apply condition. So in this case I have to apply conditions on store ID. So what I am like when or what is the condition? This is a single statement again. This is completely a single statement. So when this one then sales into 10% sales into 0 0.10. So basically it means that when store ID is equal to S1 then profit is equal to because your new variable name is a profit which is I specify in the below.
okay so s1 then sales is 10% when s2 then 20% so you multiply with the 0 0.20 else if none of the conditions going to satisfy then is coming for the else you are using the 30 and then and and then your new variable is s profit and from your keyword and this is your training dot sales is your data set name along with your library name so when you run this one so you can see for sales s1 is a 10 percent for s2 is a 20 percent so 20 percent of 190 is 38 so in this case So in this case, I am just creating a new variable based on the condition. And what are my conditions? Is the store ID. So if store ID is S1, then sales is 10%. Store ID is S2, then 20%. And if as 30%. So here I am using case and when. That is my statement to create a new variable based on the condition which I apply on the store ID. Okay, again moving to the next topic is subquery. Subquery is nothing basically what happens like when you are uh, when your one query result is depend on the other query results. This is the one of the, sub, the best example of subquery is that like if someone will ask you that what is the second largest sales or the second largest salary in your data set or in your table. So how to identify your second last? The second, the second maximum one. So what you will do it? You will take the second maximum. First, you have to identify what is your maximum. Less than your maximum. Okay, less than your highest data. Okay, just one minute. I'm just uh, some the network problem is there. I'm trying to reconnect it. So here you can see subquery. When you have to run, when your first query result. Depends on the other query. So the one of the best example is just to figure out the second largest sales or second largest salary from your data. So first what you do it. First you run your first query. So first query you are already running is select maximum sales from your sales data. Okay. So then you are taking all the values which is less than your maximum sales. And then you are taking the maximum of your rest of the data. So you are able to figure out your second largest sales. So this is the one of the best example of your software. So here you can see 